Hey guys. Welcome to another live drawing session. It's a little bit before 10, so I'll give everybody three or four minutes to settle in and get ready. Get your black marker or markers. You just need the normal amount of markers today. Colored pencils and a sharpener if you got one. Crayons if you're not using colored pencils. Paper, hard flat surface, and dun 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 smiles. I'll be back. Just going to adjust the camera a little bit. Sorry for the shaking. There we go. That's a little better. All right, let's see. Three pass. What do you say we get started? I think that's a good. It's uh, a good time to get going. So today, per usual, we are going to be drawing a super cool, colorful animal. I've already gone over the materials list, so I'm sure you guys have been looking at it for a few minutes. So I'm not even going to run down that. I'm just going to show you guys what we're going to be doing today. We will be doing a super fun, colorful gorilla. And I have chosen to do a purple gorilla. Well, purple and blue. And you can do any color gorilla you want today. But this is what I'm going to do because I think he looks cool like purple. I'm going to leave this here for 30 seconds so y'all can drink it in, have a close look, maybe make a few mental notes about some of the fun parts of this drawing that you're going to want to pay a little extra attention to. So I will be back.
Okay, I'm ready to get going. Quick note, I got my paper and camera the tall way today, or portrait orientation. And that is just to make sure I have enough room for uh, this guy's pointy head. If you wanted to go horizontal, you can go horizontal, but I would encourage you to make sure that you keep your drawings relatively within the constraints of the paper as you draw forward. And I chose vertical because uh, no, this is just the kind of orientation I thought this would work best. So I am going to get myself a nice clean piece of paper here. Boom. There we go. Ah, eh, clean enough. Got a couple little. Ooh, no big deal. Color right over that stuff. So as usual. We are going to start with our black magic marker. All right. Yours doesn't have to be magic. <laughs> Mine just happens to be magic. But it's okay if yours isn't magic. Black marker. Probably only going to need the one today. We, 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 uh, when we did the tiger, I know we had that sort of heavy black marker session at the end. By the way, there were some incredible tigers. I was... Totally blown away with some of those tigers. I mean, I, wow, you guys did a great job, an excellent, excellent job. Now let's see what we can do with this gorilla today. So the first mark we're going to make is a line. It's going to be under his nose. It's going to give us a little bit of a hint of where we're going to put the nose in, okay? So the first step, I'm going to try and find pretty much the center of my paper. Ooh. Right about there, right? And I'm going to come down just a little bit. And I'm going to make one line just like that. And I'm just going to continue to work on the nose. Um, most of the lines are familiar or, you know, pretty, um, pretty easy. This next series of lines is probably the trickiest one in the whole drawing. And I want to make them early because it's kind of in the middle and it's going to bring the whole drawing out from the center. These are going to be the nostril lines. Now they're a little tricky. They kind of look like horseshoes at an angle with a little bend in them. So watch me draw the first one and then go ahead and draw the first one yourself. It's going to be like a horseshoe at an angle with a little bit of hook at the beginning. See how that kind of looks like a horseshoe with a little bit of a little bit of a hook on it at the top. And of course, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And the horseshoe with a little bit of a hook. You know, mine's at a little bit of an angle. Not worried about it. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, when it's not perfect, it adds character. I've nailed that line. But it's true. There was a very, very popular artist not too long ago who painted on TV, on PBS. I'm sure you guys remember Bob Ross. One of the things he used to always say is, as an artist, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. And that's kind of the same idea that I've taken with uh, when you make a little mistake or something's a little bit off, it actually gives your guy character. And I like to believe that, and it helps me create art. The next lines we're gonna make are on the outside of the nose here, okay? We're gonna do it on both sides. And these are pretty, pretty basic. There might be a little bit of an S curve, maybe a little bit of an S curve. But I wanna end up just outside the nostril without getting too far away and without getting too close. So I might imagine my S curve starting about the middle of the nostril, coming out, and maybe going about halfway down where I am. Now I'm not too worried about this line. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Not too worried about that. The 
next thing I want to do is I'm going to start working on the eyes. Okay? But instead of getting busy on the eyes right away, I want to draw this eyebrow because gorillas have a very, very heavy brow. And the eyes are deep, deep underneath that. So I want to draw the brow in first, and then we'll get to the eyes. Now the brow is a, almost an oversized, that flying bird shape, if you remember that we've done before. And it's got a little bit of hook on the end, dips, comes up, and hooks back down. I'll draw the first one, and take, watch me do it, and then you guys can go ahead, all right? I'm going to come up, well, let's say, about the distance in between the top of the nostril and the top of this bridge. I'm going to come up. That's kind of where I want to end. So I'm going to come up a little bit more. All right. I'm going to come up. I'm going to dip down. Come up. Down again. Okay, now I just want to make a note for you guys. I hope you left enough room in between the top of these lines and the brow. If you didn't, you're going to want to make this second line above. If you did, like I have, I'm going to make mine below. And it's pretty much the same as this first brow line. It's just a little smaller. And it's pretty much right in the middle here. Again, if your brow is too close to your nose already, do this line above. I'm going to fit mine right in between, just a little bit smaller. All right, so hopefully you guys got something that's looking pretty close to this. And we're going to continue with the eyes, okay? The first part of the eye is going to be the inside of the eye, and it's going to be about a half circle. And it's going to connect to the brow here, to the, to the lower brow line that I've made. All right, and it's going to be, oh, I don't know, pretty much in the middle between the edge of the nose and the edge of the eye. And it's pretty much a half circle. Maybe a little bit more than a half circle. And I'll do the same on the other side, of course. There we go. Monday, huh? Hope everybody's having a decent Monday and they're ready to face this week head on. Maybe you can channel some of the power of our gorilla to get through the week. Okay, next series of lines are still with the eyes. It's gonna start on the inside, and it's, but it's not gonna connect. It's gonna go, oh, I don't know, maybe three quarters of the way around the circle that we've got here. Just like that. And we'll do the same on the other side, of course. All right, we got one more series of lines for the eye. And it's going to come from almost to the edge of this line, not quite, and it's going to come down. It's going to be have an arc to it, but it's going to come down underneath this other one we've made, okay? Almost to the end. And the same on the other side. Okay, I'm actually just going to extend this brow just a touch. Yeah, 
know, there might be a few more extra lines that we're doing for this gorilla face, but man, when I was studying these, these guys, they have a lot of wrinkles. So I wanted to make sure we put in enough guidelines so that when we jumped into color, we had plenty of cues to pack our color in and to really bring this the, the shape of uh, our gorilla's face to life. I'm going to move down towards the mouth. All right, we're going to get some lines in down here. And so you can make your, your, this is the opportunity where you can make your gorilla benevolent or malevolent, which means nice or mean. I'm going to go with a nicer look, a little bit of a smirk. If you want to make him mean, you know, you kind of want to do a little bit of a frown here. But I'm going to do a little bit of a smile because, I don't know, I'm happy today. So to do this, I'm going to do a very slight, slight line with a couple of slight bends. Okay, it's going to bend up on the outsides and dip in in the middle. It's very, very slight. It's almost a straight line. And I'm going to, you know, I want to come towards where this line ends. So very slight. Up, back down, and a little bit of a smile. I don't want to draw anything too scary because then if I look at it later, it might scare me. I want my gorilla kind of smiling back at me when I'm smiling at him for being so handsome and purple. And I'm going to draw another line below here. And this would be sort of where the bottom lip's going to end. And it's very similar to my little smile line here. Just a little smaller. There we go. Alrighty, for this next line, we're going to need a little bit of Gorilla Courage. We're going to draw in pretty much the whole chin here. Alright, I'm going to try and do it in one stroke. If you want to do it in two, do this side, and then this side, you can. But I'm going to summon some Gorilla Courage, and I'm really going to try and stick this in one line. And how it's going to come is it's going to come down, it's going to arch outwards. Flatten out a little bit, come down to the middle, bend at the chin, back up, up and around, and back in. I really want to try and get this in one stroke, and I'm challenging myself, but here goes. Starting about a little lower than the middle of this sort of outer nose line here. Okay, building up my courage. Coming out, down. Gonna kind of flatten out Give him a little bit of a chin. Here we go, coming back up. Woo! Made it. That took a lot of gumption or courage. And it's not perfect. And that's okay. Why is that okay? I can hear you guys all saying it at the same time. Gives our guy character. All right, we're going to make a few more lines. We're almost there, guys. Hang in there with me. A couple of guidelines. And then we're going to start tossing some color on here, okay? Let's make a line under here, right on the bridge of the nose. Oh, a little arc line like that. That's just going to help us fill in. We're going to do a lot of shadow in there. I'm going to do a little arc line out here and out here. Pretty easy lines. Not taking it too seriously. There's going to be a lot of color in these areas, so... This is just helping me figure out um, 
where those colors are going to sort of start changing when I'm getting uh, busy with the colored pencils. All right, this next series of lines is a little tricky, but I believe in you guys. We're going to get the ears in. And it's a little weird because we probably wouldn't be able to see the ape's ears, I mean the gorilla's ears, really from this angle. But I, f I figured out a way where we can work them in, and it will help sort of be, you know, when, when I drew him without the ears, I felt like he was missing his ears. So I figured out a way to get him in there. And I think if you guys follow with me, it shouldn't be a big deal. I'm going to start right about the top of the brow. Okay, I'm going to come out. Well, let's pretend this is in the middle between the eye and my ear. All right, start at the top of the brow. And this is pretty easy. I'm sure you all have drawn ears before, but we're not going to see the whole ear. We're only going to see the top of it. So I'm just I'm going to draw an ear shape, but I'm not going to draw it very big. See, I'll probably start at the top of the brow and end at the bottom of the eye. All right. Let's see. I'm not going to sweat this line too much. Let's just do it like that, huh? That'll be fine. That'll be fine. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Halfway. Ooh, that's fine. No big deal. All right. To finish that ear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sort of like a, a line with a little bit of a hump in the ear and then come back in. But I want it to kind of point up in this direction because the top of my gorilla's head is kind of going to be a triangle. So don't go straight up. Try and come in at an angle and just bend. You don't have to connect to the ear. Just kind of come in here and then bend back towards the face. Let's see. I think I'll start. Oh, maybe an ear higher. Coming in. Remember, I want this angle. Almost aim towards the bottom of the ear. You don't have to worry about connecting it right now. Let's just go like that. You know what I mean? Just to start to see how this shape of his head's going to come together. I'm just weaving this line in right in between those two features. Don't worry about connecting it to the ear. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's just do four more lines. And these ones are very familiar. Lightning lines, I call them, or scribble lines. Um, they're going to be both be very, very, they're all four of them are going to be very, very short ones. All right, so let's make the first series down here. And this is just to guide our color again. These are just guidelines. So they're, you know, don't sweat them, no big deal. I'm going to imagine that this line continues all the way down to about mm, where the jar, the jar is. Maybe I'll come up a little bit higher. Maybe where the mouth is, I'll start these lines. I'm going to imagine it comes down like this. All right? And just goes like that. And again, these are guidelines, so don't worry about them too much. We're coming back to that. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing up here at the, towards the top of the head. I'm going to come in way in from the outside of the head, because these are going to be sort of on his forehead. I'm going to do the same thing, maybe a little bit shorter. And again, these are just guidelines for when I start putting color in. I'm not too worried about how perfect they are. But I think that should be enough. Maybe I'm going to add two more. And there's just going to be two arc lines out here. Here and here. Just like that. And they'll probably get totally covered up by color. But I think that's a good place that's going to guide me where his flesh tone is going to end and his fur is going to begin. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself with my imagination, but try and stop me. All right. Oh, one more line. I mean, sorry, one more little detail. I want to add the little C's in his eyes at this point. Why not? I got my marker out. I probably won't need it again, so I might as well get these in now. And the same thing as we did with the tiger, we're going to make C's towards the top and leave the, leave the, op the, the middle of the C open. Just like that. That's fine. All right, I am capping my black marker so that when I need it again, it's not dried out. Look, magic. Duh. 
Just kidding, that was a pretty lousy magic trick. But that's okay. I'm a, more of an artist than a magician. To all my magician friends out there, sorry. You're an artist too, okay? Jeeps. Alrighty, I'm gonna get ready for color. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing a purple gorilla today. So, the colors I've chosen, because I'm thinking three shades of purple should be plenty. I got this really dark purple, and then I got this sort of blue. It's a little reddish blue, but it's really just a middle blue. And then I got this really, really light, light purple lavender. I took this out of Allie's kit. She has a, some, some lighter colors than I do. And I really want, uh, I wanted these three shades to be quite different. So if you're doing a green gorilla, choose a dark green, a middle green, maybe a lime green or a yellow. Orange gorilla, you know, dark orange, dark, dark, dark orange, even dark red. Uh, regular orange or maybe pumpkin orange, and then either light orange or gold would be good. Um, if you were doing, gee, what, uh, what other colors are there? Oh, yeah, red. You could use like a maroon, a red, and pink. You might end up with a little bit of a pink gorilla, but that would be pretty cool too, right? So you get the idea. I'm going to do a blue, predominantly blue, uh, sorry, purple gorilla. So I've got my three shades of purple here. As usual, I'm going to start with my darkest shade. I'm just going to recenter my drawing a little bit here for you guys. Okay, so yeah, I got my darkest purple in hand here. And I'm going to start to imagine where these darkest areas might be. And I'm feeling like it's probably going to be a lot in here. There's going to be a lot in the eyes. Maybe there's a little bit of dark up here, definitely on the bottom of the brow. But to get started, I think I'm going to start out here and maybe head up towards the ear. Actually, I'm going to start up here and head towards the mouth. I think that'll be a little bit more comfortable for my hand. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll do the same thing over here. And I'm just making these sort of arcing scribble lines head towards the outside of the mouth or the outside of the cheek or however you want to choose to identify that part of your gorilla. Next, I think I'll come out here outside that lightning bolt line I made earlier. It might be some part of his shoulders or chest starting there, but we're not going to get into that. We're going to focus on the face. All right. I'm picturing the bottom of his brow being pretty dark, so I'm just going to scribble that in just like that. Maybe there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a shadow up here too. I'll just put a little bit in up there. I'm gonna be putting some blue, blue up there too. You know, maybe he's got a sort of some darker for, fur, or maybe a shadow in his fur up there. I think I'll add a little bit more behind his ear here. And just to keep the purple going, I'm going to put some up here. I'm going to start on the outside. I'm going to finish on the outside, sort of at the top where these two might be pointing at each other. I'm not sweating this stuff too much, though. We've got plenty of color to put in here. You know what I mean? Plenty. A lot. A whole heck of a lot. Maybe there's a little bit more coming from behind his ear there. No big whoop, right? I mean, I'm going to give him a bunch of dark fur under that, under his big chin, under his big chin. Yeah, cool. I'm just going to sharpen this up, get a little bit more dark color to apply. And this is going to be in and around, uh, sorry, around the eyes and on the bridge of the nose, okay? And this is where, you know, the features of our gorilla are going to start to come from. We did it with the owl. If you remember doing those sort of circular or concentric lines around the eye, we're going to do a little bit of that here as well. So first, I think I'm going to do it in here, in between where I made the 
half circle connected to the brow, and then that little three-quarter line filling right in there. And I'll do a little bit on the outside of that too. And all down the bridge of the nose, I'm gonna do like that too. Maybe stop about halfway down. And I'm gonna do it out here. How about like this? Probably out to where I made that little guideline earlier that I referenced. We'd be using that to figure out where our colors are beginning and ending. I'll go right out to that black line I made. All right. I'm adding a few darker lines for contrast before I move to my second color. I'm just going to put a little bit more purple in up here. All right. Okay, I think that's about enough dark for now. Yeah, that's working for me. All right, so I'm just going to sharpen this up before I put it down in case I need to come back to it. It'll be all sharp for me. Okay, so for me, because I'm doing this purple gorilla, my next color I chose is this, you know, very rich blue. It's pretty much blue. It's a little darker than regular blue, but uh, that just makes me feel like it's a little closer to purple. So that's the decision I've made. And just like I always do, I'm going to use my second color to kind of chase around my first color. So because this was my darkest color, I kind of want to use the next lightest color to move that towards my next color. So I'm just going to kind of put it in around where I've made that decision already. I'm trusting the decision I made earlier to inform this one. It's all about trusting yourself, not taking yourself too seriously, and having fun. Okay, same thing out here. Maybe he's got a little bit more blue out here. Pack that blue in in between there. All right. I'm going to do it up here. Okay, let's see. This is... Let's make sure we give him some opportunity to let that brow really look nice. Because that's one of those very important features on our big gorilla here. All right. Same thing up here. I'm going to add a lot more shadow in there. And up here. Do a bunch up there. Make it look a little more symmetrical. And let's have it running right up here as well. Here we go. Starting to look like a gorilla. And I hope yours is too. All right. So I'm just going to continue with this color. I want to add some to the eyes, not too much. We've still got a lot of work to do. But maybe there's a little bit out here. You know, just supporting the other colors I've already laid in. You know, maybe there's a few lines under here. I'm using these sort of radial, concentric, or arcing lines to identify a feature of this beautiful animal. Maybe these got a little bit starting in here. Just a little. Let's not overwork the face. We have a, a little bit of a plan for that. And we're about to get into it, but we still have one more step before we can get into that, okay? I'm just going to add a little bit of dark in here. There we go. All right, is everybody good and caught up? Sweet. The next, I'm just going to add a little bit of blue, sorry. A little bit. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our third color from light to dark. All right? We're going to use this, we're going to use a lot of this. And don't jump ahead because I know what you're thinking and you're wrong. 
This is not the tone we're going to use for the skin. This is the color we're going to use to fill in some of these white lines, this white paper that we left behind with all of our scribbling. And we're just going to use this to fill a lot of that in. Not all of it, I mean, you know, we'll get most of it. But see how that's starting to really fill in the gap and make this stuff look like fur. That's the intent. Not to over apply this color or to use it as a highlight, but to use it as a filler. Using it to fill in the white paper. Alright, stay away from the bottom of the eyes. We're going to do a different color there. Just pack this in all where their fur is the heaviest. Alright, I'm just going to sharpen this. I'll be right back. All right, all under the chin here, putting that in. Whoopsie daisy, another broken pencil. Excuse me while I sharpen. Got a little fun fact about, gor about gorillas, if you guys want to hear it, I bet you do. The average male full-grown gorilla eats up to 50 pounds of food a day. 50 pounds of food. That's incredible. To give you an idea about how much food that would be, my dog would have to eat three bags of his food in one day for it to be that. Three bags. And I, we get those big bags, too, from Chewy. I am not sponsored by Chewy. But they do provide a very cool service. So, now that we've completed the commercial session of our session, <laughs> we're continuing to pack in this light purple, fill in all the white areas where the f we put in fur. Sorry, I know I'm goofy. It's fun. I like to be goofy sometimes. All right, all up here. Just going to sharpen up. Every time that Chewy commercial comes on, the doorbell rings in that commercial, my dog loses his mind. Barking like a crazy animal. All right, still packing this in. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white in the middle here under this shadow. And my, that's just because my imagination said maybe there's a little bit of forehead showing through there. So I'm gonna leave that white. All right. I'm just gonna put this in along the top as well. Leave a little bit of white in there too because I'm going to come in with the color I've decided to use for the skin tone. I think it'll look nice in there. So let's see here. Pretty much going to be done with this. I think I'm just going to make a few of these under eye lines here. Not too many. Just a couple few. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Maybe. All right. Next, I'm going to start doing some of these skin tones. Now, I've chosen because I'm doing this this purple gorilla here. I'm going to do his skin light blue. That's just what my imagination thought would be fun. So if you're doing, uh, let's say you're doing a green gorilla, maybe yellow or lime green might work as your skin tone. Maybe you're feeling super sassy and you want a orange gorilla with a blue face. So I say go for it. Because that could look cool. I'm doing a blue face with purple fur. So the blue I've chosen to do my skin tone in is this turquoise. Maybe it's like a blue with a little bit of green in it. But my first step here is going to be I'm very, very lightly going to color in where I have, where I, where I think his skin is, okay? First thing I'm going to do is very, very lightly 
color in my ear. And this might give you an opportunity to change your mind if you've chosen a skin tone you're not crazy about. Try it out here. If you don't like it, then you can change it. But I'm liking the blue, so I'm still just going to lightly, lightly add this blue everywhere I think the skin is. Okay. Everywhere I think the skin is. All right. And here. That's all skin. This nose, that's all going to be skin. All right. And now I'm going to come straight down. This is all skin, so very, very lightly coloring it all in that tone that I want for my gorilla's skin. Very, very lightly. And we're going to layer this color. I'm going to keep this pencil in my hand while I do a few more layers in key areas to darken up some of these spots, some of these features, okay? So maybe the first one is there's a little bit of dark out here, a little bit of a V. We'll just do a V. Maybe right under here, it's really, really dark. And here, really, really dark. Maybe out here, it's really, really dark. Still leaving the eyes white. Out here, it's really dark. Let's see, in the nose, it's definitely going to be dark in there. I'll just start dark and kind of fade to light as I come out of there. Okay. Maybe on the outside of the nose and under the eye, we still have a lot of dark. I'm using mixing in a little bit of these, these circular, round, concentric lines. Maybe there's a little bit of shadow where the fur runs into the skin. And one thing I notice is, unlike humans, the center of, of, an, of the gorilla's nose actually goes inwards, whereas ours comes out. So because it goes in, there's going to be a bit of a shadow there. So I'm going to just kind of, let's just, you know, use my imagination to just make it look kind of like it goes in like that. I'm not going to take this too seriously because we can put more colors in there later. That'll help build that feature up. Put a little bit of shadow above that nostril. Put a, let's see here, I'm gonna put some shadow underneath the nose. Just like that. I'm not going too dark, I'm not taking myself too seriously. I'm gonna put big shadow on the outside here. I'm dragging my pencil right over my other colors because those are darker colors so that's okay I'm, uh, they're not it's not this isn't really going to show up over that but even if it does a little bit it's okay because under the fur would be skin so if a little bit of blue shows through the fur that's okay because in real life it's there happy accident or character you judge and I'm just continuing to kind of fade this color in towards the middle I know that there's going to be a little bit of shadow on the bottom of the upper lip here. I'm just lightly shading it in. I'm not going too crazy here. I don't want to uh, overwork any particular color. Just kind of sparingly until my imagination says, Stop! <laughs> and this is going to look really cool. I already can tell. So I'm going to put this all on top of the brow here. Oh. So neat. Look at how that really starts to bring this guy to life. Oh, I like that. Very cool. And then that little piece of forehead I thought was going to show through. Let's just go ahead and color that in this flesh, fleshy blue color I imagined. Neat. Oh, yeah, that's looking pretty cool. i carry some of this blue out towards the ear. You can use those rounding lines, those curved. Just using this to fill in any leftover white I see. It's okay to use this under the fur, like I said, because under the fur is skin, and this is the color of my gorilla's skin. So it's okay if it shows through a little bit. Cool. 
All right, I'm just gonna give him a little bit of a shadow under his bottom lip, underneath, underneath the bottom lip. That gives that bottom lip a, a chance to catch some light, maybe be, uh, you know, catch a little bit of a reflection. Color a little bit into this, this line under the nose. All right, feeling pretty good about that. All right, look at that, that's looking pretty good. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the eyes, okay? And with my guy, I wanted to do bright pink eyes. And I figured out a little bit of a trick to make the eyes pop, okay? And uh, maybe you guys can try it along with me. I took this sort of, eh, it's a darker pink. Darker, darker than light pink and regular pink. And I colored in the sides of the eyes like this. All right, just like that. Just the sides. And I'm leaving the middle of that sea white. That's my reflection. I'm just coloring them just the sides with the dark pink. And then I went and got a light pink and I colored the bottom. And I thought that gave me a really, really cool effect. Almost like the brow was casting a shadow down on the top half of the eye and making some of that color show up a little bit darker. This is my dark pink again. I'm just coloring in the top here. I missed it earlier. All right. See how simple that was? And yet we got this really, really cool 3D effect on the eye. I'm going to go back to my light pink that I just used on the bottom of the eye. And I'm going to use this to highlight some of these skin features. The shadows, some in the nose here, under the eyes, just a little bit. I'm not going to sweat this too much. I just want to make a few more of these lines that are going to highlight this guy's cool, cool features. Stay loose. You know, have fun. Maybe he's got uh, some wrinkles under here that we're going to highlight with this color out here. Let's pretend that maybe his blue skin has a little bit of fleshiness to it. And I'm just pretending. I wasn't sure how that would look, but I'm not afraid. I have the courage of a gorilla when I'm drawing. I hope you do too. Put a little bit of this pink up here. Just a little bit. And I'm filling in a little bit more of this white stuff with this pink. These white gaps. That's okay. Staying loose, having fun. Experimenting, enjoying my time drawing. That's kind of the whole point here, isn't it? Is to relax. All right, cool. All right, before I get into some of my final steps, I'm gonna go back to my dark blue, which is my second color, because I feel like I left myself a few opportunities to add in some more detail with that particular color. You can take this time to work on another part of this drawing if you like. This is only gonna take me maybe 45, 60 seconds. You can watch what I do and try to follow along, or you can take this time to catch up on another feature. I just feel like he needs a little bit more dark contrast in these eyes. And I'm going to use my blue to do that. Add a little some shading where, where, where I think, or my imagination tells me it, it should be. And I'm just kind of following my artistic instincts. And I'm not taking myself too seriously. I think there's probably some fur up here going in this direction. And maybe there's some really, really dark points in there. And let's give them a little bit of darkness right above the brow. All right, I'm sure you can see what I mean. I just wanted 
a little bit more of these shadows to make my features pop right inside here. Definitely going to need some dark in the nostril. Really dark in there. <laughs> All right, add a little bit more in there. How about this? This is going to take some courage, too, and I'm going to do it. How about... I'm going to make some ripples, some wrinkles up here. Courage. That looks pretty cool, actually. You know what? I don't... I like it. I'm, courage pays off. Maybe I can do that out here, too. And I'm just using my imagination to figure out where some of these features might be. You know, I bet there's... I bet there's some lines in the ear. I don't really know how they go, so I just made, like, an I and a V. Well, that seemed to work okay. You know, maybe there's a little bit of a V there. Still feel like I need some more blue up here. All right. Maybe there's some blue, dark blue down here along the chin. Just a little. Maybe there's some, you know, wrinkles under here. And maybe there's some darker hairs right there. One, two, three. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's gonna shut a little bit under here. A little bit under there. All right. Cool. I think we're getting there. We're getting there. All righty. Let's see, what time is it? Holy mackinanny! Seven minutes left till 11. Oh boy. I guess we better get to our final steps, our super, super duper fun steps. And that would be to get our black pencil sharpened. I got my blue here, my uh, turquoise. I'm just gonna, I just wanna add a little bit more blue out here, give him a little more width to his face. You know? Maybe the shadow's a little darker when that lip really starts to touch. Underneath, too. Okay. I'm going to get my black pencil. A little bit. Get it sharpened up here. All right. Oops. Don't break. Oh, snow. This black pencil is so small. Both of them now are tiny. If I have to switch to a marker here, you guys are going to have to forgive me. Because I really like to do this last step with a pencil, but... I'm gonna, having a little bit of a black pencil shortage. I'm going to try it with my black pencil, this little guy here. Believe it or not, this is the bigger of the two I have. And I'm just going to make these suggestive outlines, okay? Up here, down... I'm not going to outline my whole drawing. I'm gonna do a little bit down here. I'm going to use the black to make a few key lines inside here, maybe up here, maybe outside around here. We'll see. But first, I'm going to start up here because that's where my imagination is telling me these black lines are going to be very important. <laughs> cool. I'm just going to do a little bit more out there. I'll come down here and do the same thing around his neck area. And when you're drawing or anything like that, this is actually called a cowl. So this would be the cowl to my gorilla's face. And maybe the fur right here wants to separate a little bit from the rest of the drawing. So I'll draw that in. Yeah, see, that looks good. And then maybe he's got some fluffy chin stuff going on. I'll do a little bit there and there. Do a little bit up here and here. I try to do whatever I do on one side to the other. It helps me uh, keep my drawing symmetrical and um, I don't know, it just helps sort of to know what the next step always is as it follows the previous step. Maybe he's got some in here. Maybe there's a little bit up here. Maybe there's some right here where this fur change transitions into skin. That looks pretty neat. Do a little bit in the brow here. 
That looks pretty cool. Let me just come out of here. That way. That way. Okay, let's see. I just want to double check, make sure there isn't anything else to do. Maybe a couple more black lines. Just sharpening up my pencil here. Maybe give him a l add to his expression a little bit by giving him, you know, maybe a couple of wrinkles up here. Very, very tiny little wrinkles. Maybe opening his mouth up a little bit towards the end. Maybe he's got some, some beard hairs coming out here. No, gorillas do not have whiskers. Good question, though. Maybe he's got some little bit of hair coming out of the side. And we'll try something a little bit. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I have the courage of a gorilla, so I'm going to try it. Make some little lines in his lips, just little ones. So maybe they kind of they kind of get smaller as they go out towards the edge. Little tiny ones, just to give him a little bit of extra texture. Extra texture. Alrighty, well, look at that. We are four minutes to to eleven, and I think we've I think we've drawn ourselves a pretty cool looking gorilla here. What do you guys think? I hope you guys uh, had as much fun as I did today. That was a that was a fun fun drawing. Never drew a gorilla before. Well, I mean, I did this morning when I was practicing for you guys, but before that, honest to gosh, I've never drawn a gorilla, and I'm so happy I got to do it with you guys today because. That was super, super fun. And I can't wait to enjoy this guy all day. All right. Sweet. So I'm just going to grab, oh, uh, I think I'm going to go with orange today to sign my work. Orange. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Please post your handsome gorillas to the page. If you don't mind posting them directly to the page as opposed to the comment section, that would be awesome so that we can all enjoy our pictures in one place. Have a wonderful Monday. I will see you Wednesday. Be nice to your parents and they'll be nice to you. I hope everybody smiled this entire hour. I sure as heck did. Sweet. Thanks. Bye. Pew, 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 pew.